Is it right? <laughs> um, we have a guest speaker today, uh, Sander, uh, thank you very much, um, who is a project manager, um, research support from Vera University. And um, this is a space for you really uh, to talk to us and discuss. So whenever you have questions, either for Sander or for us, um, either unmute yourself or drop us uh, questions or points in the chat, because we want to mainly make sure that this is the space for you. Um, but now I know Sander um, is under the time limit today as well. Um, that you, you, you mentioned you have a limited time to speak to us today. So I want to make sure that you have the time now and we can move on with the session afterwards. So if it's okay, um, I'll just give you the space now and um, thank you. All right, thank you very much. Um, yeah, let me just uh, first introduce myself. Um, my name is uh, Sander Bosch. Uh, I'm a project manager, research support at the University Library of the Vrije Universiteit, or the VU, in Amsterdam, the Netherlands. Um, just a bit of background for the for the VU. Uh, the VU has nine faculties and uh, around 3,000 uh, researchers. Um, and I'm involved in a in a big VU-wide project uh, or program called uh, Research Support 2.0. Uh, uh, which aims to bring uh, research data management at the VU to a higher level. And we do that by trying to uh, implement tools and services for our researchers. And um, what we have done so far is um, uh, quite a bit. We're working on um, uh, storage, new storage facilities for, uh, for RDM. Um, but what I've been involved in uh, specifically as a project manager uh, is uh, setting up a, a, an RDM community at the VU with faculty data stewards and RDM experts from different services at the VU. Um, and we try to meet regularly to discuss uh, topics uh, related to research data management. Um, what we've also done is implement an RDM support desk uh, where researchers can ask all their RDM related questions. And the idea of this research support desk is um, that it's a one-stop shop. So researchers basically can ask all their questions and uh, a core team of uh, some of my colleagues at the library uh, and some faculty data stewards, they try to answer them. And if, uh, if that's necessary, then they can get assistance from, uh, for example, our grants office or uh, legal um, IT security and IT for research and we have also a, a valorization office. So um, we've, we've basically tried to get all these people together um, under the hood of the RDM support desk so that our researchers can, yeah, uh, they, they have one, uh, one window to, uh, to ask their questions. And many of those questions are about uh, data management plans. So what we did uh, mid-September, so a few months now, uh, we implemented DMP online. So uh, Magdalena, uh, thank you for uh, for helping us with that. Thank you for subscribing. Um, <laughs> and since then, we have uh, 146. I just looked it up. 146 <laughs> new users and 123 new plans. So uh, our researchers are trying to are starting to find uh, DMP online, which is uh, really neat. What I've also done is uh, I've built a, a DMP template. For the for the view plus specific guidance for the view, uh, and for now I've made two templates: uh, one for research with personal data, and one for research without personal data. Um, and well, we're we're eagerly awaiting the the conditional questions. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I might might merge them uh, back together again. Mm -hmm. um, Let's see, in, in our template, uh, we've made a link to uh, security questions uh, from, for example, IT. Uh, so we have a, a link to a data security classification tool. Mm -hmm. So uh, in the future, um, I, I'd like to, to think about more integration with security mm -hmm. questions and, for example, things like uh, privacy impact assessments and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. uh, so we're yeah thinking about that a lot. Um, and we also have, uh, as, as part of the services at the library, um, uh, a, a course, how to write your data management plan. Uh, we had that before, but right now it's basically how to write your data management plan in DMP online. 
so that uh, gives us a, a steady stream of new users uh, every month. Mm -hmm. um, and that's basically how, how we, uh, we, we set this structure up uh, at Tavu. Um, I'm not sure whether there are any people with questions about that. Mm -hmm. Excellent. So, so if anyone wants to unmute and ask questions, please do or, or type in the chat. But I think a lot of the things you've talked about are similar to things that came out of the user group mm -hmm. when we were chatting um, in the Netherlands. Yeah, yeah. So I, I unfortunately couldn't be there. But um, uh, yeah, so a few of our feature requests uh, I, I heard were also shared by uh, my colleagues from Delft and I think uh, the, uh, Uva Amsterdam was also there, right? Jana Tubos? Yeah. 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 Right. So uh, yeah, B because we, we're setting up uh, uh, this data steward structure, mm -hmm. um, I think most of the universities in the Netherlands, at least Delft and the Uva are definitely doing that. Um, yeah, we, we, we have similar feature requests probably for, uh, for DMP online. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Do you want to speak on that? Or? Yeah, um, so um, we were quite nicely surprised, for example, about how heavily is the department or school, whatever you define it at your institution, uh, used by the Dutch universities. And uh, we were, for example, saying that um, we would like to change the workflow a little bit and just to make it easier for you to understand where your users are coming from and maybe find a link how you can then redistribute the specific data steward mm -hmm. with the department itself. I don't know what it is would be possible, maybe through an API yeah. extension, um, mm -hmm. which was a quite interesting discussion on that end. I don't know whether it'd be worth now just moving on a little bit just to talk about our user group as well. Smoothly. Yeah, because I think there's some nice parallels yes. there. Um, so the, the the way the um, it's useful to kind of feed the DMPs out to the data stewards and maybe assign per um, school or department faculty, or yeah. faculty. Um, I think that was something that came out strongly in the Netherlands because mm -hmm. you've often got a team. And um, interestingly, we had a meeting with NWO um, on just yesterday, so after the user group. Um, and one of the things they were talking about, because they have um, templates from institutions that they're approving, sometimes all they need to see within a, temp within a DMP is the answers to the questions which are the most they map to the um, science europe requirements mm -hmm. so maybe it's a subset of the dmp for them and they had a very interesting observation that maybe some elements of the dmp need to really go to different people so mm -hmm. there's maybe a gdpr okay. section that would yeah. go to that team for approval or um you know an it section or certain questions that are tagged to maybe go to different groups and i think given the way you work in the netherlands with these kind of teams of data stewards Again, there might be a nice um, way to to break up the elements of, mm -hmm. of the DMP and who's relevant for which questions and to give feedback where. I just do remember, I don't know whether you remember, um, in our user group in London, this was a request as well, or yeah. meant to discuss that, you know, there are some sections where it could be nice. I don't know whether it would be on our end, on your end, have those triggers where the email would be sent automatically, yeah. um, either because the storage is all in a sudden too big or, um, yeah. So no, the IT department, the library would be informed, or the GDPR, GDPR office, um, yeah. or ethics office. Yeah, this kind of came up with the conditional mm -hmm. questions yes. as well, because there's maybe different people you want to alert. Because mm -hmm. um, Manchester Uni, for example, they're linking their ethics process and their DMPs. So I think there's there's similar things coming up through through mm -hmm. the different user groups. Um, and actually, just one thing to mention, because you, it's flagged on the conditional questions, that's some work that Ray, who's on the call, um, has just recently finished. So it's out to, to UAT for us later this week. We expect that to be in a roadmap release um, probably next week, and then we'll deploy it to our servers. So in the next couple of weeks, it will be on the main DMP online instance. So Excellent. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so not not long till you can look at that on your mm -hmm. on your um, templates and maybe set some triggers to skip out questions if people don't have sensitive data. Um, okay, so I don't know whether it would be like worth just maybe just showing our agenda um, or just mentioning a few of the things we have discussed, but um, I can just click here maybe to show you. But I shared our main agenda for today's call. Uh, I send a link into the chat so you can follow all of these links later on also yourself. Um, 
but we were having the user group in Netherlands um, just to give you a little bit of background um, on Monday in Utrecht and we we started with introducing um, who is in the room and it was quite nice because we were having some uh, remote um, joiners in the call as well mm -hmm. from Brazil uh, from Portugal, Sorry, two, from two Portugal. people from Portuguese funder and from UK as well. So it was quite nice and in the room we were having people from Sweden and from Finland as well. And so it was quite nice variety. Uh, it was majority of the users were of course coming from Netherlands, but it was nice to see that the groups are merging gradually mm -hmm. a little bit more. Um, so the discussions are um, quite interesting. So then we followed with Sarah and Sam who gave us a nice update about what's new and what we worked on. and. Um, I don't know whether it would be worth just opening the slides, Sarah, you think, here, or people can just follow. Uh, yeah, oh, well, actually, we can maybe see later yeah. in the call if, okay. if we've got time to go through these as well. Um, but we, the main discussion we mm -hmm. had in the user group was around um, the create plan logic. Mm -hmm. um, so sometimes we've heard that users don't always know um, what they'll get when they select different options from that um, create plan wizard page. So we've um, thought about maybe a more simple routine and actually possibly it's worth mm -hmm. just showing the version um, that most people liked most in, in the Dutch user group. Um, it would be great to get other people's feedback on this. Um, but if you look at these slides and pretty much scroll to the bottom, it's the final option, I think. Oh, yeah. um, the one with the uh, pinkish slides, the Karolinska version that we'd mocked up. Um, what we thought is that we need to kind of make the different, um, all the options explicit. And the idea is that we'd maybe ask the two key, um, two key filters really. So whether somebody has a research funder that's applicable or an institution that's applicable. And as normal, the institution would default based on um, where the user's based. And then based on those filters, we'd present people with all of the relevant options. So they would see any institutional templates, any funder templates, and any other relevant generic ones like um, the main default template or potentially you might want something like a software management plan template as a generic one. Um, and hopefully that makes it a little bit easier for users to find institutional templates because we've had some feedback that um, that's not always been intuitive. So what we'll do following the user group um, as a team, so myself and Magdalena and Diana and um, the three developers, we'll sit down and we'll process the feedback we got um, and certain topics like this, which would be a, a fairly big change. We want to do more consultation with, you know, all of our other users um, and then make those adjustments in, in the tool. So over the coming week, we'll have a blog out about the user group so you can see, you know, what came out of it and what, um, what uh, new tickets are being raised from that. There was also a talk from the European Commission um, there and Magdalene has put all of the links in the slides here so you can see um, the talk from the EC about what they expect to do with their data management policy as well. Mm -hmm. um, so just to let you know we have been actually this is only I think third week after uh, the Christmas break for us but we have been quite busy and uh, with other things as well and one of the those things we picked up on after coming back to the offices was uh, to work with our legal team and we are currently working on a contract update based on all your previous queries or questions or requests and um, we'll be issuing a new version in the following weeks and this will apply to our new renewals from May onwards. Um, I think I can just mention now if it's okay just the main yeah. change will be around offering service credits and I think that's really the yeah. major major thing to mention here. Yeah. There were some smaller tweaks as well, um, just like smaller practicalities, but I think this is going to be like the biggest change to our contract now. Yeah, um, so, so the service credits just make it easier if there has been any issues on the site, if we've had periods of downtime or um, times where a bug's been raised and we haven't responded in, in the kind of, um, in line with the service level agreement, it means that you'll get a credit on next year's contract. So it, it makes it a lot easier for you to ensure that we're delivering a, a good service. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that's a change which 
I assume everybody would be amenable to. Um, but what we'll do is send the new contract so you can share it with lawyers and just check that that's an, a set of terms you'd be happy to um, sign up to for renewal time. And one of the other things we were working on, a little bit different to the contracts, um, for me personally, a little bit more fun, I was <laughs> to work, and we are still currently in touch with the graphic designers, and we are um, working on new promotional materials for DMP online, which is hopefully going to be done sometime soon in the following yeah. week or so. Um, so we'll be having quite nice images, uh, which we'll be able to use across all the printed and digital materials. So something to look forward to. Um, yeah, and that's something where um, I think some of you have got or um, seen the existing postcards will have new ones that we can send out for you to use in your training mm -hmm. or at other events that you hold. And um, another big chunk of work, chunk of work uh, which we're currently um, gradually working is changing the usage dashboard for the administrators. So again, um, I think the time is running quite quickly this morning, so I'm not going to go into the details, but there are the links for you to follow if you're interested. But basically, we are just trying to make the usage dashboard for the administrator more responsive and mm -hmm. hopefully more useful. Um, and again, you can read through the tickets um, and get more sense of the work around this. But um, basically, a long story short, it's just going to work more for you. So you'll yeah. have more insights about, I don't know, how many plans were created or how many you know, users were submitting those plans and uh, work around it. And yeah, um, another news, uh, we will be having a summer intern. Um, we are um, still, I think, be, are receiving applications at the moment. Yeah. Yeah. And um, our admin over the summer, uh, not admin, sorry, our intern over the summer will be working on the admin interface. Um, so hopefully there are going to be very positive changes around yeah. there. I think this, this would be a really nice um, area if you found anything difficult when you've been using the tool. Um, so I know, Sandra, for example, you talked about creating templates. If any of that process was hard, like you couldn't find certain buttons or you didn't know how to publish or maybe the guidance and templates, you weren't sure how they interlinked, that's the kind of thing that would be useful for us to know. And then we can develop some tests around those specific features um, and hopefully find ways to improve the, the usability of the admin interface. Well, if I can respond to that. Uh, yeah, yeah, of course. Uh, when when I was making the uh, the templates and and guidance, I actually thought that the process was uh, really clear. Uh, oh, good. <laughs> That's good. Yeah, I, I thought it was uh, relatively easy to uh, to build the templates and and uh, link the guidance to different templates. Okay, good. Good. That's that's Good helpful to know actually because certain things like publishing, I know people have found difficult in mm -hmm. the past. So um, we've done usability testing on the front end for researchers, but we haven't done as much on the admin interface. So we thought that we should focus on testing there because there's now actually a lot more admins and more active users. And and I think certainly with with um, universities like Freya, when you have multiple admins, so people who maybe are just doing plan reviews we need to make sure that the interface works well for them. So it's probably something they're only going to look at periodically and, you know, not be using it on a daily basis. So mm -hmm. it needs to be straightforward. Great. Okay. Um, and one of another news for you is that next month, um, even less probably now, uh, mm -hmm. we are having our IBCC. Um, it's between the 17th and 20th of February 2020 in Dublin. And again, I'm sharing all the links with you, but just so you know, there are going to be some things around the DMP and DMP online as well. And um, myself, I'll be giving a lighting talk um, about our business model, uh, but Sam will be also showing some demos and um, I can't remember what else. There are quite a few things around yeah, the DMP. There's, so. so there's actually a, a full strand on DMPs where we've got a few talks from different organizations. Mm -hmm. There's some demos and we also have a non-conference. So potentially if there are topics around DMPs that people would like to discuss, so maybe something around the reviewing plans or the guidance for DMPs or the integrations, because I think um, that's one of the key areas of work for us. Um, we might want to hold a non-conference session on something like that. Mm -hmm. But yeah, the full program's online, so by all means, have a look. And even if you can't attend, I think it's worth following the hashtag on those days. Definitely. 
Um, and Sarah already mentioned uh, that everyone is very keen and waiting for the conditional questions. <laughs> um, so they will be in our next release and um, our software developers are working hard to get this ready for you. Yeah. yeah. Um, let me just scroll through the agenda and here just to see. So, um, for those who missed our December, uh, December newsletter, it's out and the link is in here. Um, if you haven't subscribed to our newsletter, also do so. Um, it's quite useful, I think, because we're always sharing our um, important days or interesting days for you, such as those drop-in sessions, but also, I don't know, like our user groups. So it's good to, to read our newsletter, I think. Um, each month, uh, we, we hold these user group sessions and um, we are already having a list on YouTube. So you can either watch the whole playlist, there is a link um, in the agenda and the last recording is available uh, on YouTube as well. Mm -hmm. And the, the thing, so for instance, how Sander's spoken to us today, um, we have a knowledge exchange at each of these drop-ins. So you get news from us, but also news from the community about how people are using the tool. So you can, by all means, go and watch those videos and hear from other people. Um, but there's a monthly blog post, a knowledge exchange blog post that we have in the newsletter too. So you can read um, about how different unis are doing things like the ethics integration at, at Manchester. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know whether there are any questions from you. Um, you can either um, unmute yourself or drop in anything you wish to. And yeah. to the chat. Yeah, I see. I think the only thing in, in the chat at the moment, Diana's put the link to IDCC. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, so Diana's the main person organizing the conference. I don't know if you want to say anything about it, Diana, or just an encouragement for people to come along. Um, and if anyone has questions for, for Sander or on the updates or any questions for the devs, um, by all means, let us know. You're a quiet bunch today. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, there is zero pressure. Uh, you can always <laughs> drop us an email um, if you feel more comfortable to do so at dmponline at dcc.ac.uk. And if you can think of some questions for Sander or for Sarah and myself or our DMP online team, you can always drop us an email. We'll do our best to get back to you. I'll forward your emails if there are any for Sander. Um, and we, we can get in touch in that way. Um, so if there are no more questions, I think I'll be able just to slowly wrap up. Um, if you're not following us on Twitter, uh, do so at DMP online. Uh, we are also on Facebook and LinkedIn. And just for everyone to know, we are having our next drop-in meeting on the 26th of February, which is after IBCC. And it's going to be half past 10 the UK time. And we already have a confirmed guest speaker. Um, next month is going to be Judith Carr from Liverpool University. So um, we are looking forward to have her over. And yeah. thank you, Sander, very much for joining yeah. us today. And Yeah, uh, no problem at all. Um, I'd be happy to uh, turn this into a blog post as well. Oh, I, I think I've, uh, I've promised that before. So <laughs> I'll actually do it now. Thank you very much. Excellent. Thank you. And it's great, I mean, to hear those user figures to see how you're having the impact from running the events and directing people at the tool. So yeah, hopefully they're finding it a useful, useful way of writing their DMPs. Um, all, all I wanted to say is uh, for the conference, um, you have time to register until the 3rd of February. Um, okay. And it's not far for Europeans. It's only Dublin. Um, got yeah. good whiskey, so. it's, it's surprisingly well <laughs> connected Dublin. That's one of the things I found. There's direct flights everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Excellent. Well, so thank you, everyone. And we are looking forward to speak to you soon. And yeah. have a lovely rest of today. Yeah. Thank you. And thanks, Sander, too. Thank you, Sander. Excellent. Bye-bye, everyone. You. Goodbye. Bye.